Hello and welcome to another quick video walking through the anomaly stack solution. Uh, in this example, I'm going to dig a little bit further into the dashboards and try to understand a little bit more of what's going on and how can I use just this very simple view uh, of the intelligence data that I have and what, what can I use to, to facilitate and, and help guide me in my threat intelligence role. So when you first log into the platform as a user, you actually come to this initial landing dashboard and there's very limited uh, views of some of the data, but you can see here five charts that give us a little bit of a snapshot into the, into the data that we have within our stacks installed here. So what I can see is, is a little bit of information around where is it coming from, what the data is tagged with, what level of confidence we have around that data, what's the overall severity, and, and what are the type of the indicators themselves. So first off, let's just talk about the source. I'm not going to spend a huge amount of detail on this one, but just think of it this way. This is where you are obtaining your intelligence from. If you're using the stack solution, you're most likely to be using the anomaly limo feed. So you'll have some, some lists there with, with relevant feed information there. Alternatively, you could be using something like uh, Hala Taxi or, or one of the commercial uh, taxi feeds as well. But you'll see that broken down here. And as with some of the other charts here, literally just clicking on something will take you to that feed information. So, for example, I can just click on this one. Uh, I can look at the emerging threats compromised list that, again, comes from the, uh, the anomaly limo feed. Uh, it takes a little bit to say that one. Uh, and again, if I just click that little pie chart, it'll actually take me to the data for that particular feed. So in this example, I can see there's uh, 1,244 items, a whole bunch of IP addresses, different confidence and so on. If I scroll across, hey presto, there's the there's this feed source. Where did it come from? It came from the anomaly limo uh, service as well. Is that useful? It's kind of useful because it gives you an idea of the breakdown of where the data is coming from. If you're using multiple sources, and also the, the fees within those particular taxi feeds as well. So you can start to understand what's going on, whether I'm being drowned out by a particular feed, whether there's an excessive amount of data in a particular feed. Next, we'll look at the tags. So tags are things that are applied to the data uh, as part of that information that's been provided by the feed provider specifically that gives you additional contextual information. There's no fixed element to what those tags mean specifically. It could be a number of different things. It could be, for example, how a particular feed has tagged it with regards to a URL watch list or an IP watch list. It could even be something to do with the source of that information as well. So, for example, we can see that uh, it's come from one particular source there or a different source here, for example. And again, as per the other chart with the pie chart, again, if I click the fish tank side of things, it brings up the view here with regards to the data in it. And I can see this has all come from uh, Halo Taxi and uh, Fish Tank. So you get the idea. Uh, this little bit of a chart that just allows me to drill down into those particular tags. Um, I can't necessarily dig down into precise details of every single entry with all the tags applied to them, but it just gives me a, a very simple top view of the profile of the data. So again, I can start to understand the type of data I have here. Where does it come from? What is it tagged with? So in this case, I've got a very large amount of IP watch list and a relatively large amount of URL, URL watch list information here as well. So I probably want to be thinking about maybe boosting up my file hash data because I've already got a very limited amount of information there, especially because if, if I want to integrate this with, say, for example, my EDR tools at a desktop level, I really need to consider that. The next thing I need to look at is the confidence. Uh, so the confidence is around the, the confidence you have in the data itself. So it is scored as delivered as part of the platform. In the, in the case of Stacks, when we're pulling the data from the anomaly limo feed, we will have this confidence rating. So we'll understand how much confidence we have in the data quality. So in this case, it's scored from 0 to 100. Uh, we can see there's a few pretty low, we don't have a huge amount of confidence with, and there's some that we have very high confidence with. That's not security, that's with a severity aspect, but again, we can click on this and go, okay, we've got quite a lot, 5,000, just under 6,000 entries around the 90 to 100, so we're very confident around those. So again, I can click on those and I can see that, I can see a mixture of scan and Tor IP addresses and so on, malware I, uh, URLs and so on. Again, I could step through that and have a closer look and dig through that data. Again, it helps me understand, where did I get the data? What is the data tagged with, so additional context, and how confident are we on that data specifically? So again, we can start to understand where are we getting the most quality data from. But again, as I mentioned, it's not necessarily the severity. Severity refers to the security.
security aspect of things. Not how much confidence we have in the data, but the security uh, relevance of things, so the severity of it. You're going to get some low data. Uh, that's, uh, for example, Tor exit nodes uh, that don't ha that aren't linked to uh, command and control malware, for example. Um, that just means it's an anonymizing service. Is it bad? Could be. Is it something we want to monitor and look for? Probably, but it's something that doesn't necessarily carry a huge inherent risk with it. So that would be a typical example of something scored low. Something scored very high is typically something that has a very direct relevance around security and the context of that. So for example, that might be a current active command and control system for a, uh, a very prevalent piece of malware, for example, and that would score very high on the, on the severity side of things. What's different here is this particular chart just gives me a view of the data. I, I can't click through and I can't necessarily see the data around that. I, I just see the information. What I do get is uh, some scoring around that. So this is kind of what you'd expect to see uh, as across uh, on the data as a whole. Uh, a reasonable amount of low, a fairly uh, a high amount of medium and high, and hopefully a very low amount of very high. Very high tends to be uh, very high confidence around obviously the quality of the data, but also severity actively from the, from the actual security aspect of things. And typically it's very recent data as well. So we need to bear that in mind too. And finally, we get the indicators themselves. Each of those indicators, uh, we break them down into understanding what they are. So this is just a top view, a little simple chart to view things like uh, uh, compromised uh, email accounts, uh, malware domains, uh, scanning IP addresses, and so on. This is just a simple top chart that gives us that view. So we can see that we're pretty much dominated by some very specific bits of data here. So we can see that uh, uh, scanning IP uh, type information, uh, we're getting big blocks of that. So 4,000 there and another 4,000 there. So we probably should be aware of that, understand uh, what that data is, maybe have a closer look and, and slice through the data, aware of my, where's this data coming from? Is it tagged with a particular set of information? So for example, IP watch list is very likely to be part of the scan IP range. Uh, and if it's very high confidence, great. But if we're getting very low confidence, remember, low confidence and low severity, and lots and lots of IP addresses that are scanning, that's again, it's not a particularly important thing to be digging into and understanding. So we might not want to be looking at that data so much. Maybe we want to be looking at some other things that we have very high confidence, very high severity and high confidence on uh, that's not necessarily scanning IP addresses because it's going to occur a lot. So again, the dashboard allows us to understand a lot more. Where are we getting the data from? What's the tagged additional context that we have? How much confidence do we have on that data and, and slice around that? Ultimately, how much severity around the security aspect of things? And then, then finally, around the indicators themselves, what type of indicators are we getting so we can understand the data there. So again, it helps us have a better understanding to have a broader spread of intelligence to make sure we're not being dominated by a particular set of data that maybe, for example, that we don't have very high confidence with or is irrelevant to our, our particular needs for a, for a threat intelligence side of things. And then finally, from a dashboard view, I'm going to pick on this one from a from a, a, a overall. It defaults to seven days, but a range here. It becomes very useful to to have a, a wider range of data. So, for example, I just set it for 30 days. I'm not going to see 30 days of data because I've only been running this for a, a, a few weeks or so. But what I do get is a different view, and that's important because data tends to happen in chunks. It tends to get delivered as part of the feeds in particular chunks, and we can see that. There is a big peak here uh, that's actually uh, high severity data, but it, I'm not getting particularly high, very high data here across everything. And when I look at across this couple of weeks here, it's very disproportionate. So I probably want to be digging more into this. And in fact, actually, if I look at my indicators across this time, actually Tor IP exit nodes here are dominating my indicators. Again, if that's relevant to me as an organization, I, that's useful intelligence. But if this isn't useful to me, I might want to consider going into the configuration for stacks and maybe not having so much Tor data, maybe excluding some of the feeds that are delivering that Tor data specifically. That's just a very quick walkthrough as a very simple dashboard that's provided as part of Stacks. Just a little bit more dig into what is the data, what does it mean, what can I use it for, and how can I use that to start making some decisions around some of the intelligence that I have, what does it mean, and how can I use that to help understand and organize that uh, intelligence over time as well. So I hope that's been useful, and uh, please uh, keep watching for further videos on Anomaly Stacks. Thank you very much for your time.